what it is. I have come to the shuk early to get some fish because on Rosh Hashanah we are the head and not the tail. I'm just gonna take you out on a Yom Shishi at the shuk and I have to find Joanna. Joanna This is definitely the hour which you want to come because there's barely anyone out yet and uh, the shuk is just starting to like to come to life and I like the shuk at this hour. This hour is good. what I'm going to do is I'm going to prepare the salmon so that when I'm picked up it's already been marinating for a bit but first I need water So Copper Boy is taking a little nap. I wish that I could take a nap, but I can't because I actually have work to do. But before I do, I'm gonna set you guys down and we're gonna have a little chat. On Rosh Hashanah, often what I do is because of the nature of Rosh Hashanah, I look back into the year and I try and think, well, what changed or what didn't change throughout this year? And maybe it's mixed. Maybe the positive and the negative or the things that I wanted to change and the things that did change are inseparable. So I remember last year I went to the shulk and there's this really nice shop there with like, we call it a delicatess, but it basically has a really good quality, I don't know, like cheeses and jam. So at the time I didn't have a lot of money and usually, let's just say, if I bought honey, which is expensive, I would buy the cheaper type, right? I would buy the common one that comes in a squeezed bottle. I wouldn't necessarily get one of the special ones. I saw this honey, and as a sip of faith, 
I bought two of them, one for my sister and one for me, like as an act of faith. Oftentimes honey speaks about tasting of the goodness of God and of the goodness of life and that life would be sweet. And that's why we say that you would have a, a good and sweet year. So I bought that for my sister and for me and I gave it to them as a gift on Rosh Hashanah. And I'm looking at this past year and I can only talk about my own struggles. I know that financially it has been such a huge struggle, huge struggle with my business, just trying to get it moving. Business is oftentimes not stable. I guess what comes with that is that you feel lack, but actual lack, not just like, oh, I wish I could go out to eat more with my friends or whatever, like actual lack of looking how much you have and thinking what you can buy in the supermarket, like that kind of weird laugh. So what happened is that I had a business opportunity that I had started and then they canceled on me and I couldn't find new work. I didn't feel like God was telling me to go back and get a nine to five. So what do you do when you don't have enough money? You make ends meet. You go and you take the jobs that are offered. So in the past and also now, there is um, this person that I do cleaning for. Basically, the last, I don't know, two months, I've been doing part of my content creating work, but also I've been cleaning houses. And it's exhausting, physically, emotionally. It's good money, but sometimes even that wasn't enough by the end of the month that I had to somehow manage. And so it was super, super stressful. What happened yesterday is that I somehow started working late in cleaning. And so with this type of job, you just come and you do the job. You don't really take breaks like maybe you'll take like one second to drink but apart from that you don't take breaks and what ended up happening is that from 11 30 to 5 i was just working and i didn't have like a good breakfast before and so at some point i was just hungry i didn't want to spend money on getting like delivery for food I didn't want to stop because I didn't have the time to stop. And so what ended up happening was that I was cleaning, really hungry, on an empty stomach, and then my head starts to hurt when I'm hungry, and then you feel super nauseous, and you're exhausted, and you just feel gross and bad. This is not to say like, woe is me, like we all have these tough days and tough times in which we don't have a lot, but I've really been praying to God and asking that I would be the head and not the tail. And a lot of times in life, I have found myself feeling like the tail and not the head and sort of feeling like, God, where, where are your blessings? Like you said that if we obeyed your commandments, we would have a life of abundance. And financially, it's been such a struggle that I can't say that I've lived a life of abundance. But the shift that happened in my heart yesterday was that somehow, for some reason, I had joy. And I had joy in lack, meaning I knew that I didn't even have much food in the fridge. I knew that I wasn't going to be able to make the month and that I would be in lack. And for some reason, I had joy. Like even in drought, even in famine, even in lack, I still had God and salvation. And for some reason, that somehow just trumped it all. And I know that people say a lot that God, he's the, he's the joy of our salvation, right? The joy of our salvation should be the most amazing thing. And yet when it comes to the daily struggles of life, you don't always feel the joy of salvation because you're thinking about now, not about eternity. You're thinking about your empty stomach and how you're going to pay your bills and the fact that you didn't make enough money or that you're just not making enough money in a normal job or whatever it is, there's enough reasons to feel unhappy and I've been going through months of learning or trying to learn how not to worry, how to surrender, how to just work without complaining, how to have faith for the days ahead and I did see God come through miraculously in different types of ways and so I don't want to minimize the things that he's done like people suddenly gave me money or blessed me with something or offered me food or paid for my meal or like my, my fridge was suddenly stocked with food. And so I'm not saying that God doesn't provide. Even when he doesn't provide in the way or by the time we think he should, it doesn't mean he's not good. It doesn't mean that he doesn't love me and it doesn't mean that he doesn't care. And I think that that's the difference that I'm so happy to find out that I have matured because before it's like any little type of inconvenience, either big or minor, my brain would immediately go to, God, why don't you care about me? If you're such a loving God, then why don't you provide? If you're such a loving God, then why would you 
allow me to sit here in this situation. And there have been people in history that have gone hungry, that have died of starvation, that died because they had lack or or they had to leave their houses because they had nothing or they were homeless because they had nothing. And I'm not saying that God had sent those you know, situations to them and I'm not saying that God caused it or that, I'm just saying that sometimes life isn't kind to us and sometimes circumstances happen, but it doesn't mean that God isn't good. And I think that that's the major shift that happened between then and now is that I understand better that God is good, no matter how my year looked from then till now. Another thing is that every single year we have a tradition in my family that we take an apple, we dip it in honey, and we ask for something that we wish for ourselves for this year and then for the person next to us, and that's how we do around the whole table. And every year I wish for myself to find a husband, and lo and behold, another year being 32 years old in which that hasn't happened. What am I supposed to conclude? That just because God didn't give me what I wanted, that, that he's not good, that he's not a provider, I can't look at life that way because if the goodness of God is contingent upon my circumstances, then I'll never think that he's good because there could always be something unpleasant or bad or even traumatic that happens in life. It doesn't, it's not an indication to God's goodness. And I think that that's the huge challenge that I've gone through in life. And that I'm just really happy to see that throughout this year, God has really done something in me. Like it's God did it in me. I can't take credit for being like, oh, I'm just naturally positive. You guys know that I'm not naturally positive. And yet in these situations, God is still good and kind. And so that's my little Rosh Hashanah spiel. This Rosh Hashanah, we are going to believe you and I for God's abundance in whatever way he offers it. Not necessarily just financially, but in our relationships, in our spiritual life, in our successes, in our in our everything, in our personal growth. There's so much abundance to be had. And I just want to find myself grateful for all the types of abundance that he gives us in our life and also to intentionally look at them. And here is a montage of this Rosh Hashanah. And I'm just going to say a blessing for you and I as you watch the montage. I love you. Every Rosh Hashanah, I look back on the year that has passed. And obviously there are things that have changed and there are things that haven't. But what I do realize is that God has changed me. And that I think is the greatest gift to see that actually I've grown and I'm not the same person that I used to be. And so this Rosh Hashanah, this coming year, I pray and wish for you and I that we would know abundance in all of its forms, that we would know the richness of family and friendship, that we would be rich in love and rich in kindness, rich in generosity, rich in patience, that we would be able to observe life not from below, but from above, that we would be able to recognize how God is good in every situation, and that we would be open and in surrender to how he wants to do things in our life this coming year. I pray and wish all of the abundance that we always wish for, that we would have more than enough food, plenty of money, that we would never lack in friendships and in relationships, that we would always find success. But if this year you find yourself in a challenge and don't quite understand what that kind of success looks like, that you would still find joy and contentment in the challenges and the transitions in the small hours of the night in which you sit there worried, in the times that you cry because you just don't understand what is going on, that somehow, despite it all, you would know that things are going to be okay, that this too shall pass, and that even though the challenges are great and high, the God that we serve is greater, that He is going to give you beauty for ashes. And even though He might not appear in the time that we think He should, He still is always good. So I hope that this coming year, you and I will feel the goodness of God, even when we can't taste it. But on the day in which we do taste it, that we wouldn't forget to be grateful, because God does always come through. So from my heart to yours and to all of your loved ones, have a Shana Tovah Mituka, have a good and sweet year. Happy Rosh Hashanah.